Our peoples, our businessmen and women, and our young people in particular, can no longer wait to see the barriers that are breaking up the continent, hampering its economic development and perpetuating misery at a time when Africa is full of wealth. Well, let's get more from Judith Tyson in London. She's a research fellow at the Overseas Development Institute. Welcome to the program. So there seems to be a lot of progress in a short amount of time with this African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. It's very uncharacteristic of other free trade agreements that progress has been so quick. Why is there this sense of urgency? Well, I think it's certainly a, uh, uh, being seen as a significant opportunity uh, for Africa, a time when other opportunities are maybe be, uh, diminishing, particularly uh, in relation to trade opportunities with advanced economies. So there is a sense of urgency around that. Um, it's also being led uh, very strongly by President Kagame, um, who is head of the African Union at the moment and he's promoting uh, trade um, uh, right across the region. Uh, but I also think there's a, the progress is somewhat limited in that um, uh, there's a lot of political handshaking and so on, but the actual level of ratifications we've seen to date has been, uh, been more limited. Yes, and as you say, there are still a lot of countries who haven't signed up to this agreement. Is there any hope that we can see a, a more all-encompassing agreement in the future that covers most, if not all, of the continent? Well, I think it remains to be seen. So 30, uh, uh, more than 40 countries have already uh, uh, officially agreed to sign up to the agreement, but only 13 have ratified it. 22 are needed for the deal to go ahead. So they're still quite a long way away from that. Um, I think that there's, there's two issues. One is just simply the, the procedure of ratification, which requires legislation in most national parliaments. And obviously, that takes some time. But there's also um, you know, backroom haggling still around the political agreements and some some countries are looking, uh, you know, at what they're going to gain or lose from the from the agreement for themselves individually, and that is causing some domestic political problems, uh, and most notably probably in Nigeria at the moment. Yes, I, I was just going to ask you about Nigeria, actually, because it is Africa's biggest economy. Uh, President Mohamedou Buhari has said that he fears the deal uh, would hurt Nigerian entrepreneurship and industry, and that's why he hasn't signed up to it so far. Do you share any of his concerns? Well, I think if you're speaking only from the Nigerian perspective, um, there's both some pros and cons. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, it's, the, it's Africa's largest economy. And if it's, uh, if it's manufacturing sector sort of sees the net with this, there's probably a big opportunity. But President Bahar has also been under a lot of pressure from uh, industry lobbyists within Nigeria. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, he initially said he would, they would join, and now they're saying they're not. Um, and I think that they are concerned really about the exposure to uh, competition that the free trade um, agreement would bring for, for them as, as firms. Uh, you know, and, and obviously some of them may find it more difficult to compete uh, than others, um, you know, across the, across the region. Mm. And this is happening at a time when there are serious questions about the benefits of free trade agreements. Uh, for example, in the United States, all sides of politics in the last presidential campaign basically united to say that many Americans were actually worse off under globalisation. Are there similar fears in Africa over the benefits or disadvantages of this proposed free trade agreement? Well, the issue with free trade agreements is, is uh, in total, there's always, uh, you know, a benefit uh, because you, we see improved efficiency and competition, including a benefit for consumers. But the, the difficulty is always about how that is divided, and there are also winners and losers. And, for example, what's happened in the United States is uh, lower-paid workers are now competing globally with, uh, you know, uh, uh, workers in uh, China, now increasingly in Africa as well. And that will probably happen within Africa as well, where, um, you know, some firms will be left behind and uh, maybe some segments of the population will not benefit and may be made worse off, whereas others will be made better off. 
Okay, Judith Tyson from the Overseas Development Institute. We'll have to leave it there, but thank you again for your time.